gentlemen, my fellow gamers and history enthusiasts, today I come before you with a mighty mission, a Herculean task that will require every bit of my wits and strategic genius. That's right, folks, I'm talking about reforming the Kalmar Union in Victoria 3. Now, I know what you're thinking, isn't that a bit like trying to herd cats or convince a toddler to eat their vegetables? Oh. Well, yes, it's a bit of a daunting challenge, but that's never stopped me before, and let's face it, if we can't bring a bunch of medieval Nordic countries together under one banner, what hope do we have for world peace and harmony? But fear not, my dear comrades, for I have a plan, a plan so cunning you could pin a tail on it and call it a weasel. <laughs> so grab your helmets, your axes, and your sense of humor, my friends. It's time to embark on a journey that will test our mettle and our sanity. But remember in the words of a wise Swedish proverb, Sjong om studentis lik ligar da. Let's party like it's 1397. So, starting out as Denmark, we needed to focus on a couple of things, such as research. I'm afraid we need to use math. Now, our research actually wasn't all that bad. We did have tier 2 research in all three categories of our technology tree. So, I decided to grab atmospheric engines for when we needed to grab iron. And then I decided to follow up by building, maxing out the logging camps in New Zealand. While also looking at our resources, I came to a very wonderful conclusion. So, yeah, we, we don't have iron, coal, or lead. It's a disaster. Like, literally. You know who has all of those things? Sweden. They Thanks, Sweden. Anyways, so I decided to look outwards, and the only solution that I came up with was South America. So I decided to put a strategic region in La Plata. The reason for that being is because we won't really get much of a struggle in South America. We get the resources that we need. We won't need to worry about Great Britain or France really colonizing at the bottom of South America. They're really just fighting for Africa majority of the campaign. And also, the reason why we couldn't colonize Africa is because of malaria and countries also having higher battalions. Even though we are more technologically advanced, our military Terry just doesn't meet the size of theirs. So I decided to promote social mobility in both Jutland and Zealand. So I decided to mess around with the budget bit as well. Uh, I did change it a lot, just going up and down, really just seeing what works. I didn't want to radicalize Denmark too much, but I also really wanted to be making a costly, effective economy. <laughs> So then I managed to activate corn laws and trying to get landowners out of the government and uh, the first law we managed to grab was poor laws due to the fact that uh, Denmark actually has all the laws that we kind of need in the game anyway so it was pretty nice. Our first target of conquest was Mecklenburg which resulted in them backing down. Next was Lebec and also Brunswick but for some reason Prussia ended up abandoning Brunswick due to the fact that uh, Austria declared war for German leadership on them which I found pretty lucky. So next in our very first actual proper target of conquest outside of Europe was Uruguay. So I decided to go for a puppet play on them. So the battle had begun and I had to make sure that the Danish conquest in Uruguay had to go successful so the world could know how strong Denmark was and that they should definitely fear us. The battle of Uruguay had begun with a successful naval invasion in November 9th and our Danish forces were literally just unmatched. And for some reason, I, I started talking to myself because I got a little bit lonely. Now, Kway, you guys, I'm trying to, uh, trying to see... Uh, mm, yes, yes, I see. Finally, after some time, we had managed to puppet Uruguay. Now, I was a little bit more focused on trying to get dedicated police force, which also enacted as well, which put a big smile on my face. So, I was still messing around with the government quite a lot, trying to see which laws I could pass, but I couldn't pass, and realizing that we were in a legitimate government. So, I decided to actually go for landed voting. And then, just after unlocking labor movement in our research tree, I actually was going to go for organized sports to get that extra prestige buff, but I actually ended up going for central banking, just so then we could end up unlocking mutual funds to drive capitalists into our economy more to start investing into our buildings so then we could also get a higher investment pool. It's my boy. Then I also found out that Argentina was an insignificant power. So I wasted no time to try and puppet Argentina because it was just an opportunity that I could not waste. And just like that, we managed to grab a landed voting and we had started the battle in Buenos Aires. Now, obviously, Argentina was no match for Danish and Uruguayan forces. And the front actually ended up splitting with Uruguay literally just having a 100% uh, advantage because Argentina was too busy trying to protect their capital. And honestly, it, it was the best 
thing that I've ever seen. Finally, the war had concluded with us obviously being the victor. So now having Argentina and Uruguay as puppet states in South America, I would start to look at Chile as another puppet state. But for the meantime, I needed to go back and focus on Europe, which is literally me just annexing Mecklenburg, Bremen, Lebec and stuff. Really nothing all that interesting. Oh, and I also found out that I could just have access to the iron mines in Bremen for some reason. I didn't realize that up until now of recording this. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a bit stupid. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> And while doing this, I noticed that the Ottoman Empire was actually subjugating Serbia and Wallachia, which I've never seen before in any of my campaigns. And I, I just thought that was absolutely strange. Now, I really just started to focus more on my economy, really trying to up the value of the Danish market. So building stuff like arms industries, paper mills, really just focusing on our government needs, our pop needs, and just really trying to get everything well-rounded while still struggling with iron, coal uh because the imports man they they just weren't looking good but while also doing that trying to also annex a couple of subjects as well just trying to make sure everything was going place in place in hand uh so obviously you know had to do what i had to do and then a golden opportunity presented itself sweden was having a revolution now i was really tempted to go to war on sweden to grab scania but i also didn't want to risk the entire run and just absolutely butcher this entire video so i decided to back off just due to the the fact that I looked at the revolution and they weren't as strong as let's say Sweden's normal forces and also Norway would have been part of the picture as well so yeah it was really just like a it could have been a do or die or you could really mess things up so I finally decided to go ahead and puppet Chile because at this point I was really just trying to fight to grab the major power rank and literally, I just wanted natural subjects to have them to be paying me their good Golio cash to obviously up the value of the Danish market. To be honest, I thought it was a great idea. So, you know, it had to be done. So the war had started, but the war had finished just as soon as it started. Now, I was still moving around with the government actually putting the intelligentsia in, and I decided to actually go for public schools, obviously because religious schools was giving the church a little bit of power, and I did not like that. Now, once again, for research, I wanted to grab all organized sports, human rights. I was really just trying to find what would work, what didn't work. So and then I decided to go back to society and actually grab psychiatry. A little time had passed, the public schools had passed, so I decided to actually go for cultural exclusion. And finally, I thought it was finally time to go to war on Ashanti. Now, I was going for a puppet play because obviously having more subjects, the better, and also they could help me fight these wars in Africa. The war had started, and let's say Olaf Rye was an absolute G. It seems that everything that this man touches turns to gold. The Battle of Ghana, he was unstoppable, pushing the Ashanti forces back into their homelands, and with Danish forces finally being victorious. So why stop there? So I now started to look towards Damoni, Damagram, Bornu, but most importantly, Sokoto. Now, Sokoto was the most powerful African nation in this region. Now, also, I went to go ahead and try and find mutual funds, which I, for some reason, I was looking the wrong direction. I thought human rights was it for a second, but we managed to end up grabbing human rights. Ah, uh, fuck, mutual fund. Now, obviously, I went to go ahead to declare war on Damoni, which also, they ended up backing down and obviously, I was trying to enact guarantee liberties, which was also taking its time. So I finally decided to puppet Bornu, Oyo, and I wanted to go towards Wadai, but honestly, I didn't see Wadai as a target of conquest, to be honest. I, and I just I just saw it as building up unnecessary infamy. So I went to go ahead and declare interest on Northern Africa, and I didn't really know what I wanted to declare my interest on, if I'm going to be 100% honest. It was really just trying to see what region would I need or where I could go to actually increase my power. And I, for some reason, didn't realize that I had became a major power, and I was just really excited. And I could finally puppet places such as Peru, Bolivia, but most importantly, Sweden. The ultimate goal. Because if I could puppet Sweden, I would get Norway, and all in one, lads. So I decided to focus inwards once again, really trying to balance out resources, iron, coal, lead, sulfur, and also our industrial areas. This is because I was about to take the biggest risk of this entire campaign. I was ready to invade Sweden to take Danish revenge. So I'd finally managed to grab mutual funds, which was absolutely huge. And not only to add on to that, we could actually ally with Brazil, which was absolutely huge, and especially in our war against Sweden. And finally, it was time. Time to declare war on Sweden. Denmark had the backing of Brazil ready to go to war on Sweden. Nothing could stop us. And I'm telling you all now, I was ready. I had big 
the balls in a hairy elephant. And I was ready to have the greatest battle in Scandinavian history. This conquest would be known in the history books, but I did not expect this to happen. What? Huh? No! No! It's not supposed to be like that! Uh, what? Just like that? Huh? Whoa, 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 buddy, 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 whoa! <laughs> what the f- Wait, whoa! I mean, okay, um, that, that, I saw that with my own eyes! What? I mean, hey, I'm taking it, I'm, I'm taking it, okay, well then, yeah! Woo! Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I did not expect it to end like that. It was just very anticlimactic. I I was very annoyed. But anyways, so I obviously decided to build up a lot of government administration buildings because obviously once I was to form the Kalmar Union, I would have a lot of states to incorporate and it would be very annoying. But finally, I had decided to form the Kalmar Union and trust me, I didn't actually expect it to actually form the Kalmar Union. I thought it would say Scandinavia, but it actually formed Kalmar, the Kalmar Union, which was absolutely sick, and it even gives off a yellow color, which was just absolutely sick, and I did not expect. But aside from all that, we had a lot to do. I wanted to stack up the iron mines. We needed to change production methods. I wanted to change all the buildings to publicly trading to increase capitalist investments. But finally, there was just one thing that was missing. One thing. I may have had a good spot in the power ranking, but there was just one thing that I needed revenge on. Great Britain, I know. I really needed to do something about it. And not only that, it was because my rob on Sweden was stolen from me. I needed a battle, a climactic battle, and it didn't end the way that I thought it was. So I went for a puppet play on Greece, and obviously Great Britain wanted to join in because they wanted a treaty port. So I've been sitting down for a good couple, three hours recording this, and I wanted to take a nice piss. So I went to go take a nice piss, and just to come back to find this on my screen. Yes, I transferred Australia and Canada over. So I was literally just gaslighting myself the fact that I had somehow managed to grab Canada and Australia from Great Britain and I was even more surprised to see Aotearoa uh, actually form somehow some way but yes obviously the war ended the way it was and my days man that burger was busted not gonna lie though I'm feeling kind of horny don't want to waste my load on a piece of pork if you know what I mean boy Psst. Kermit, that's the least thing I want to know about. I'm trying to finish this video. Do you mind if you be quiet? But man, that burger was busting, and I want to talk about Miss Piggy. All right, I'm lonely, but I didn't know you were editing. Yeah, 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 that's great and all. But the video is about to end. Do you mind if you tell the viewers to like and subscribe? Hell no, you can do that yourself, lazy. Do it. Oh, shit. Make sure you guys like and subscribe if you want me to live. Please. Oh, God.